Let's say that the position of some particle as a function of time is given by this expression right over here. Negative d to the negative t power plus c to the fourth over c squared plus one, where c and d are constants and both of them are greater than one. So what I want to do over the course of this video is see what can we infer based on this expression, this function definition that we have here. And the first thing that I want you to think about is what is the initial position? If I were to express the initial position in terms of C's and D's and try to simplify it. So I encourage you to pause the video and try to find an expression for the initial position. Well, the initial position is the position we're at when our time is equal to zero. So we will essentially, we essentially just want to find P of zero. And P of zero is going to be equal to, it's going to be equal to negative D to the negative zero, so I'll just write that down, negative zero plus c to the fourth plus c to the fourth over c squared plus one. Well, d to the negative zero, that's the same thing as d to the zero. And since we know that d is non-zero, we know this is defined, anything non-zero to the zeroth power is going to be one. And the zero is actually under debate what zero to the zeroth power is, but we can safely say, that this right over here is going to be equal to one. And so the numerator here simplifies to, this is equal to, and I'll switch the order, c to the fourth minus one over c squared plus one. And now this might jump out at you as a difference of squares. We could write this as c squared squared minus, minus one squared over c squared plus one. And that's the same thing as c squared plus one times c squared minus one, all of that over c squared plus one. And we have a c squared plus one in the numerator and the denominator, so we can simplify. And so our initial position is going to be c squared minus one. So that actually simplified out quite nicely. Now the next question I'm going to ask you is, okay, we know that the initial position at time equals zero, the particle's going to be at c squared minus one. But what happens after that? Does the position keep increasing? Does the position keep decreasing? Or does the position maybe increase and then decrease, or, then in, or, or it decreases and then increases and keeps swapping around? So I encourage you to pause the video now and think about what happens to the position. Does it keep increasing, does it keep decreasing, or does it do something else? Well, let's, to answer that question of what's happening to the position after our initial position, we really just have to focus on, we really have to focus on this term right over here, this d to the negative t. This is the only part that really t is driving. All of these other things are staying the same as we go through time. So what happens to d to the negative t power, to this part of this first term, as t goes from zero onwards? And to think about that, let's plot Let's plot the, what the function d to the negative t looks like. d to the negative t, d to the negative t would look like, would look like, and we know that d is greater than one. We know that d is greater than one. So when t is equal to zero, so this is t right over here, and over here we're going to plot on this axis, we're going to plot d to the negative t, d to the negative t. When t is equal to zero, this is going to be equal to one. We've already seen that. Now what happens as t increases? Say t increases to one. Say when t increases to one. Well now this is gonna be d to the negative one, which is the same thing as one over d. And we don't know the exact value for d, but we know since d is greater than one, one over d is going to be less than one. So let's say that this is one over d right over here. One over d, so we're gonna go, gonna be something like that. And then when t is at two, we're gonna be at one over d squared, which might be, it's going to be, let's see, it's going to be something like right over there. And you see at least this term, what it's doing is t increases. As t increases, d to the negative t is strictly decreasing. Is strictly decreasing. Is strictly decreasing. And once again, we know that because d is greater than 1. So this term right over here is strictly decreasing. So this is decreasing, that part of it. But we're not adding it, we're subtracting it. We're subtracting, we're subtracting from the beginning. At, at first, this starts off at one, we subtract one, and then we start subtracting smaller and smaller things than one. So if, we're, if we 
So if this is decreasing, but we're subtracting it. We're subtracting smaller and smaller things. This whole thing, the negative of it, is going to be increasing. Is going to be increasing. Increasing. Another way to think about it, if you wanted to plot negative d to the negative t, it would look like this. It would just be the negative of this right over here. So it would look, it would look something like, I'm doing that yellow color. It would look something, it would look something like this. It would look something like this. So this whole term right over here, negative d to the negative t, is constantly increasing, constantly increasing. And we know that all of these other things, well, these are, these are just going to be fixed. So this entire expression is constantly increasing, starting at t equals 0, and then t going into larger and larger positive values. Now the last thing I want to ask you is, what is the maximum value here? What is a, a value that this will never be able to get to? It might get, try to get close to it, but it's never going to quite get there. Well, we already know that it's increasing, but let's just think about what happens what happens as t becomes really, really, really large numbers. Really, you could think about it as t approaches infinity. Well, once again, let's look at this d to the negative t term. You see that d to the negative t, as t gets larger and larger, is getting smaller and smaller. This term right over here is approaching 0. Is approaching 0 as t, as t goes to infinity. Well, if this is approaching 0, that means we're approaching subtracting 0. So it's increased. This whole yellow thing, the negative d to the negative t, is increasing. But it's increasing at a small, smaller and slower rate. So this is the negative d to the negative t. This is right over here. You see it increases, but it never quite gets, it never quite gets to the, the horizontal axis right over here. And so if we, if we think about as t approaches infinity, this whole thing just becomes 0. And our entire position is approaching, but never quite gets to it never quite, get, never quite gets to c to the fourth over c squared plus 1. So one way to think about it, it's approaching this, but it never quite, never quite gets to a position of c to the fourth over c squared plus 1.